an inglorious fight from all angles. Sugar Ray Leonard. The timekeeper, the takeover, Mr. Blackie Swart from South Africa. The referee, the scratch raptor, Mr. Carlos Perrocal from Panama. And now, in this corner, from Knoxville, Tennessee, United States of America, weighing 109,25 kilograms, 240 pounds, Big John Tate. In this corner, from Boxburg, South Africa, weighing 101 kilograms, 222 pounds, Harry Kutia. Van Knoxville, Tennessee, in 109,25 kilogram. The ring instructions being offered by the referee Carlos Baracol. As you heard, the judges Ken Marita from Japan, Carlos Casas from Argentina, Baracol out of Panama. Tonight's crowd of over 80,000 sets a new modern record. In fact, for the 81,000 paid, 89,000 in all. Tonight's gate among the top over $3 million have been taken in. Back in September of 78, Ali Spinks drew 68,000 in New Orleans at the Superdome. Back in 1926, 120,000 turned out for Tony Dempsey in Philadelphia. And the crowd has been pouring in since 2 this afternoon. Amazing. Attention mouths. John Tate in the white, Hedy Cotzia in the blue, both 24 years old. Tate 6'4", weighed in yesterday at 240 pounds. Cotzia listed at 6'3", I would say maybe 6'2". He's at 222 pounds. Cotzia comes off that stunning first round knockout of Leon Spinks back in June in Monte Carlo. Fight scene here on NBC. And Tate comes off the eighth round knockout over Kelly Knutsa of South Africa who won earlier here tonight. That fight taking place in South Africa. Both these fighters undefeated. Tate 19-0. Kotsia is 22-0. And looking down the road, perhaps the winner here will face the WBC champion, Larry Holland. It did rain earlier in the day, Ferdy, and we have seen a very slippery rain. The, the fight is exactly the reverse of what each fighter predicted. Body blows being offered by Kotsi, who likes to talk to his opponents, and that's what he's doing right here. Uh, so, far, so far, Tate has been doing the running, and Kotsi is chasing the exact opposite of which both fighters predicted, which is also predictable. He's still talking to him. You got to hand. Uh, you got to shake a little. Opening minutes, round one from Pretoria, South Africa. You can hear Ace Miller, his main corner man, saying to John Tate, you got to get the jab going. You got to get the jab going. He's going to have to get something going because he hadn't won anything in this round so far. Tate is very methodical. His program performance is hey, hey, the nickname The Fighting Machine. Hey, hey, likes to work the body. And is usually able to shuggle punches is, to the head. Usually still, oh, left hand by Kotsia. You have to disregard crowd reactions because they are very far away from the ring. And because of the poor lighting situation here, really not able to tell the impact of the blows that are thrown. And, of course, when predominantly Kotsia country, anything he does will rate a big scream. Kotsia is very fast, strong right hand. Particularly now, well, oh, there's a right by Kotsia to the body. Particularly now with that bionic fist, which we'll get to later on if time permits. Yeah, I don't think that will be a factor at all. 
They've had several good exchanges, but nothing really solid has landed of any effect on either fighter. Final seconds of round number one. We'll be back in a moment. Round two of a scheduled 15. Fight will be judged on majority vote. In other words, for two of the three officials differ, and the third score for a draw, the result would be a draw. Scoring based on a 10-point must. If the fighter is knocked out, he must take a mandatory count of eight. The bell cannot save the fighter except in the final round. Three knockdowns in a round, and it is all over. Good opening second round action. You can see that Tate has just pulled away the first round. And now he's changing his tactics and coming on. And Kotsia continues to talk to John Tate. He's trying to talk to him. He may get a bionic jaw as well as bionic fist if he gets you doing that. Let me do it. On the subject of the bionic fist, a year ago, Kotsia broke his right wrist during a fight. Doctors fused the bones in the wrist, bone welded to bone. As a result, according to one of the doctors, Kotsia can punch a brick wall with it, and the fist won't break. There is one hang-up with this. Uh, Kotsia's right hand is said to be permanently in the shape of a fist. Uppercut by Kotsia, but Tate able to answer back. Not much damage done. Left hand by Kotsia. Misfiring. And a good right hand by Tate caught him after he misfired. Tate is slowly cutting the distance between them both, and now it's Kotsia that's backing up. We have a reversal of the, of the first round. John Tate in the white, Eddie Kotsia in the blue. We are in round two. Not much has happened thus far. A 15-rounder for the WBA heavyweight title. So far, the well-advertised body attack of John Tate has failed to materialize. He has not gone to the body at all. He has been head-hunting, which is exactly the opposite of what he said. But see, on the other hand, has been doing exactly what he talked about doing. Exchanged by Kotsia, but again, no damage done. As said earlier, about 89,000 and all here, but it's difficult to hear them. You can't hear the enthusiasm because they are located so far from this ring. We are in a rugby stadium in Pretoria, South Africa. Combination by Garcia and Tate, able to land a right hand. Good straight right hand by Tate, but after he's received two or three good punches by Garcia. Garcia is fast, just as fast as they said he was. Final seconds of round two. Dr. Pacheco, would you describe what you see? Well, you see some scars on there, but you see good movement. He's able to move that fist. He's, now you see him extending it. It is not frozen in a, in a fist-like uh, manner. You see the scars on there. It is a good, good surgical result. They put eight pins in, and he is now able to use it fully. I would not think it's going to be any kind of a factor in this fight at all. Disregard the bionic fist. And let's get back to the bionic third round. At first, uh, Tate's people felt that uh, Kotsia had an unfair advantage. That is all part of the politics of the uh, pre-fight situation. Marv Albert and Freddy Pacheco. We are in Pretoria, South Africa, located some 40 miles outside of Johannesburg. I'm Tate in the white, and Kotsia in the blue. And now we've reverted back to first round, where Kotsia was chasing and Tate was bouncing away. Frankly, it's a little perplexing, his, uh, his battle strategy, Marv, because he seems to be going one way, then he goes the other, then he comes back again. Kotsia, on the other hand, is relentlessly determined to track Tate down one way or the other. Yeah, kill him, Greg. Men are a bit, hurt. Let's see what you like about you know, Marv, this could be strategy because he came in at 240, John Tate, and they feel that this strength uh, that he has with 240 may tell in the late rounds. Combination by Kotsia. 
He may be whiling away the first five rounds, and that's a bad mistake in any fight. You think he's too heavy? 240 is an awful lot for him to carry when he's been fighting at 230. It, it may be strength, but it, it's most likely going to be weakness from round 10 to round 15. We're halfway through round three. Cotsia at 222 pounds, so he is 18 pounds lighter. In the early going, Cotsia taunting Tate, and Tate is also hearing it from Cotsia's corner. Right hand by Tate. Good exchange. Tate is bouncing an awful lot for a 240 pound man. And once again, a quiet period here in round number three. Well, for all the well-advertised blitzkrieg of uh, Patsia, he has not been able to get down to serious fighting with John Tate for two and a half rounds now. Left hand by Tate, but Kotsia slipped on this wet canvas. That can be a factor. The canvas is awful wet. They put rosin all over it, which in effect has made it more slippery. We are at Loftus First Fed Rugby Stadium, Pretoria, South Africa, John Tate of the White, Harry Kosia in the blue, vying for the WBA Heavyweight Championship, a crowd of better than 81,000 on hand, and for the first time, the stadium is integrated. What the long-range effect of this remains to be seen. There are still many questions to be answered. Slip at the of the ball. We are in round number four. Round three closed with a good combination throw by Kotsia. Late hand by Kotsia, who slips again. Tate twice has been rocked. At the end of the last round, and that straight right hand rocked him. It is a proven fact that Kotsia has a tremendous punch. Twice he's proved it so far here. At the end of the last round, they worked very hard on Tate. Tate seemed very calm and composed, however, and he came right back out and got hit by another right hand. Tate's going to have to start doing some fighting here. There are some fight people who have compared Kotsia's speed to that of a young Muhammad Ali. Once again, the soggy wind conditions nearly had Kotsia down. Well, he's not as fast as Ali, of course, but this current crop of heavyweights, he's, he's about the fastest of the current crop. Earlier in the day, it did rain here in Pretoria. And as a result, during the course of the undercard and right through here, as you have seen, the conditions have been very slippery. Right hand blocked by Tate. Kotsia with, with a cut. A on his left eye, on the left corner of his eye, he's got a little nick. He's wiping his brow again. He got hit with the butt. Tate landing with the right hand and scoring. Tate gets hits by right hands very easy, and that is Kotsia's great. A minute remaining in round four. And the referee, Batterkull, able to break them. Right hand by Tate. And Kotsia being pushed to the ropes by Tate. And they separate. Tough situation here because if you throw a roundhouse punch, you could go flying because of the slippery conditions. Well, the guys that are throwing the punches are slipping more than the guys that are getting it. Uppercut by Kotsia was blocked. And once again... The referee, better call, breaks the two fighters. There's been very little infighting, and that's where Tate figures to have the advantage with that great weight. Right hand by Tate. Final seconds of round number four.
this is round five of a scheduled 15. John Tate on the left, Harry Kotsia on the right side for the WBA Heavyweight Championship from Pretoria, South Africa, the biggest sports event ever in South Africa. Kotsia out of Bucksburg, South Africa, 24 years old. John Tate fighting out of Knoxville, Tennessee. He also... 24 years old, the second of seven children, quit school at the age of 12, became a migrant worker picking fruit, and then in his late teens, boxing changed his life around completely. He's been unleashed this round by his corner to go at him a little bit more aggressively. They're telling him he's losing his, his uh, rounds on points, and he has to come up with a little bit more fighting. Tate does have a bad habit at times of crossing his feet when moving backwards. And that type of situation can only worsen with the slippery ring conditions. So they don't have much confidence with that slipping and sliding it in. Crowd has been very quiet, except for the moment when Kotsia entered the ring. And there are over 80,000 here. Tate's main, main thing to go to the body has been totally neglected by Tate, which is a startling change from what he's trained and how he's started to fight this fight. I imagine much of the relief of Harry, who has had difficulty conceiving what it would be like to get hit to the body. He expressed it to me several times, asking me what effect of body punches has. He has not been punched to the body much. And of course, that was exactly what John Tate figured to do. Left hand to the body, landed by Kotsia. Tried an uppercut, no effect. The referee is Carlos Berrical out of Panama. And a very good one. Crowd trying to urge Kotsia on. Left hand bothered Kotsia. They're trading jabs. That's one of the things that Tate has to, the key of Tate's attack. He's got to get his jab going. Cut missing by Kotsia. They break him out of the neutral corner. We are in round five, scheduled for 15. You get the feeling this is not going to be this quiet much longer. <laughs> you get the feeling this is building up into a good punch here. One right ahead by Tate. And I must say, Tate catches every right hand that's thrown. But he throws a good one in return. And we are coming to the conclusion of round five. This is round six, and we have it about even to this point. This is Marv Albert with Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, the fight doctor. Better than 80,000 on hand here in Pretoria at Loftus Roosevelt Rugby Stadium. It did rain here earlier in the day. Therefore, we have had very slippery rain conditions. It's been tough for both fighters to unleash. Change of jabs, the referee, Carlos Berrical of Panama. We have been playing a deadly game of chess up to now, and they're getting a little bit more serious as this goes. And the tension you can feel, both fighters are trying to land their one good shot. They're both heavy punches. I must say, Katsia has landed the harder of the punches, and he's had Tate a little rocky at the end of one round. He's, and, but Tate takes a tremendous punch. John Tate, who came in at 240 pounds. Let's see if that time was pushed by Tate. Straight left, delivered by Kotsia. Kotsia coming off the surprise one-round knockout of Leon Spence. That time not making contact, and the uppercut did by Kotsia. But it was a foul. Uh, he was being broken, and he was holding his head back, as he's doing right now. He can lose points for that. This is a very good referee. You don't mess with Barakal. Halfway through round six. WBA championship fight. It's a small ring, and this uh, soggy mattress-like canvas should be in Tate's favor, but so far, nothing is in Tate's favor. Good exchange, the best of the fight. Best of the fight. They both took their best shots there. 
We are in round six, and this the best action that we have seen thus far. These two guys are throwing bombs. They're landing, but they're taking it very well. I do know one thing. Katsia's not talking so much. John Tate is getting that right hand counter back to Coetzee's counter. That time the right hand landed on Coetzee. Tate able to block one. So the exchange continues. Coetzee trying the uppercut. First one man in the go, other. Round six. First one man in the other with the right hands. It's an incredible right hand exchange. I've never seen boxers just continuously pound each other with the right hand. They seem not to be using their left. Heating up here in round six with only seconds remaining. Crowd of better than 81,000 on hand. To my eyes, more than 90% of the crowd here is white as we look in on round number seven. Most of the black people seated in the less expensive seats upstairs, the seats that cost 10 rand. That's about $11 American money. Ringside seats selling for 300 Rand, which is $400. And there was no problem selling out ringside in quick order. Kotsia in the blue, Tate in the white. I'd like to show you more of the crowd here, but the stadium has inadequate lighting. Therefore, for the most part, we can show you only the ring under the proper condition. Tate is a very well-schooled fighter. He goes exactly what the corner tells him. He's got a good boxing corner comprising of Ace Miller, Don Marshall, and Judge Hill, Doc, Doc Whittle. Down there's a fourth man in case of injury. Katsia with Tate up against the ropes, but he's all right. Tate is just weathering each storm and trying to counterpunch. And doing it effectively, I might say. Which leads to a very even fight they're having here. Good exchange in round six, but that's been about it. Well, this is the kind of fight where they build up damage to each other, and then the, the later rounds, it's whoever's the strongest can take the most. The combination by Tate had Kotsia on the run. I'm absolutely amazed he has not done any body punching. Absolutely amazed. We are live on Sports World. There's yes, a slip and Tate looked to connect. Not a popular move here. Kotsia slipped, he was down, and Tate tried a right hand, and fortunately for Kotsia, it missed. We are live from Pretoria, South Africa, round seven. John Tate in the white trunks, Eddie Kotsia in the blue for the WBA Heavyweight Championship. This canvas is treacherous, but particularly in the corners where they slip. That last exchange by Tate was more of a push. First punch to the side. Tate is programmed, coming on ponderous punching. Back of uh, Kotsia. 30 seconds for me. And this round seven. Kotsia has found the accommodation to the uppercut and has thrown it several times in this ring, and he's been landing it in this round. All right, less than 10 seconds remaining of the round. comes a slip. If he hits him here and knocks him out, that is, he loses the fight right there. Take the fight. Disqualification. Right, this, which is rare. I think Tate did not mean to hit him when he's out. He was throwing and he, and he had slipped. He did get hit by a good right hand before, as you saw, but the slippering came way after the right hand. It was a legitimate slip. There was no problem there. This is round eight. The referee is Carlos Betacon. And this fight is still for anybody. It's open for the taking, Mark. This fight is going even, even, even right down the line. First one guy takes a round, the other guy takes the other. 
and John is not doing what he's supposed to be doing, which is wearing him down with his big weight and with his big body attack. Katsia, to his part, is fighting his fight. Well, Katsia slipped and again tape hit Katsia when he was down. And that was a stern warning by Barakal. Barakal and his English said, down, no punch. I take point away. And he went. It must be said, those punches were almost nothing there. I mean, they were just, but they shouldn't have been. Still, uh, still, it shouldn't be done. John Tate will not be a uh, popular man here in South Africa following this fight, and he has been very, very well received. I would certainly hate to be in this state. You may be lost by disqualification if you won by one of those fights. Marv Albert, Dr. Furry Pacheco from Pretoria, South Africa. Eddie Cotsia on the right, John Tate on the left. And this is round eight. We are halfway through. Tate landed a right, but on the ropes, although Cotsia is all right. They keep that, that ballet of the right hands. One throws and misses it, the other connects with a counter, and they go back and forth that way. Once again, Cotsia is talking to Tate. That's how this fight began. Tate must not have much to say. He just hadn't said a word through the whole thing. Just keeps coming. Combination by Corsia, but Tate able to work his way out of it. Less than a minute to go in this, the eighth round. Corsia has thrown more body punches than Tate has. Right hand by Coetzee was effectively blocked by Tate. Tate getting a little impatient, you see. Well, Tate, using the resiliency of the ropes, uppercuts exchange. We have just about 10 seconds left. This is the end of Robbie and finishing with the flu. Is round nine for the WBA heavyweight championship. John Tate in the white, Henry Cotsia in the blue. They concluded the previous round with a flurry with the fans coming alive and chanting for Cotsia. Most people at ringside have it even to this point. I think everybody around us, the champion Roberto Duran, has it even as does Lujan, the other fighter. Members of the British press have it even. It is an even fight. They have just seemed to almost exchange blow for blow. Of course, we're in South Africa, but with international referees, that shouldn't make any difference. Straight left hand delivered by Tate. Getting a little sloppy now. Tate must begin to cut him off. He must begin to get him close and start taking command of this fight. This cannot go on this way much longer. As the fight progresses, how do you think the weight of 240 pounds would affect John Tate? And of course, that is our main problem. If he, if it's natural weight, John will take it to him and he'll wear out. Could see it, but if it is extra weight that he's carrying, he will tire out. Canetti has something to say about that. I'm sure some of these punches are going to take a little steam out of him. John Tate has not been marked thus far. You mentioned earlier you thought that uh, Kutsia might have taken a shot on the forehead. He had a little nick on his eye that worked on it, and it's just no factor. Uppercut attempted by Kutsia. Less than a minute left. We are in round nine from Pretoria, South Africa. We are live on Sports World. There have been no knockdowns, a couple of slips. Tate was, uh, pardon me, Katsia was worried about cuts, but he has an excellent cut man in his corner, Dr. Jack Lewin. His father works as a chief corner man, Nas Botes, Maz Yenis works in the corner. 
Both have excellent corners. Body shots landed by Tate. That's the classic under and over. Hook to the body and a hook over. He planned to do it. That's what he must do. We're approaching the 10th second mark. Round number nine. Roberto Duran just leaned over and said, body punching. Final seconds, ninth round. Because this is round 10. John Tate on the left, Teddy Kotsia of South Africa, the South African heavyweight champion in the blue trunks. Fight has been very close thus far. Thus far, no man has won the championship here. They we're just going back and forth. They'll back into a championship if they keep going this way, which would be a disappointment to this crowd that came alive when Kali Kanozzi. Well, the combination thrown by Kotsia. Tate was stunned. But he's all right. of better than 81,000, setting a new modern record for a heavyweight championship fight. And now his corners holler, hit him anywhere, hit him on the shoulders, hit him on the arms, hit him, go get him. That's and a that's good what they got to do. Tate's fight. He must hit him anywhere. He's a heavy, heavy, heavy puncher. He must hit him anywhere. On the arms, on the shoulders, anywhere, but go after him. And we're midway through round 10. Exchange did not connect. Thrown by Tate. Tate is picking up the pace considerably. Oh. Tate just laced him, which is not nice. Tomorrow here on NBC, a big NFL doubleheader. The early games, including the Dolphins and the Patriots, the Bengals and the Browns, and the Raiders and the Jets. And most of the country will see the interconference clash between the explosive San Diego Chargers and the Los Angeles Rams. We suggest you check your local listings for the games and times in your area. It all gets underway with NFL 79. I think Tate is finally starting to take command and fight the fight he wants. He is starting to, to maul and, and push and shove and hit, and that is a fight he wants. Ten seconds to go, round ten. A fight that thus far has been a disappointment. Scheduled for 15, we have Tate with a slight edge off the last couple of rounds. Incidentally, if there is a draw, according to World Boxing Association rules, there would not be co-champions. There would be no champion. In other words, that would probably lead to a rematch. I don't think there's going to be any possibility of a draw here. John is getting on his streetcar and going down the road here. He's starting to chase. He's starting to punch. Barakal warning that he cannot hold him with his left hand in order to punch. Tate was guilty of that. Tate is also now reaching for those body shots. And that time made contact on Kotsia as they break. But those are very dangerous at that distance. He must get him close to do that. That's what he did all the end of the last round. That's what he's doing right now. Tate is coming into way. There he goes. There he goes. Good half by Tate. Is hurt for the first time. The left jab by Tate. Tate looking to finish Kotsia off. Looks like Kotsia has the cover. Out of the trouble in the corner. He's pushing him to the ropes. He's taking good punishment. That good punishment's gonna. That's too much weight on him. This is round 11, and John Tate has certainly come alive. The last three rounds. 
Tate is fighting his fight. He is wearing him out. And Kotsia must do that. He must jab, jab, jab and get away from him. He threw six or seven straight jabs. John is not stopped by that. Oh, he's coming. I think Tate senses he's got him. That right hand not having much effect, although the crowd did react. Straight right hands do have an effect cumulatively. You can almost see Gutsia slowing down with each punch. We have less than a minute remaining in round 11 from Pretoria, South Africa. We are live on Sports World. Marv Albert and Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. And a big round for John Tate. Every time Tate smashes a hand to the body, he goes over it to the head. And that's where he's going to get him. He's going to headhunt this guy to death right now. But Sia had difficulty getting off the ropes. But Sia's in deep trouble now. Deep trouble. Deep trouble. He's holding on. He's holding on. He's doing everything he can to keep John from getting boxing space. And we are now in the final seconds of round 11. By tape. You see the second half of the doubleheader, and that will. This is round 12 from Pretoria, South Africa. Kotsia came out trying to land a right hand. John Tate taking the last round has come on very strong the last three rounds. The fight has been a major disappointment. For South Africa, it's their been biggest a... sports event ever. And, of course, they have been rooting for Hedy Kofsia. But Tate has taken charge. It's a major disappointment for South African fans. Naturally, they're rooting for Kofsia. It's not a disappointment as a, as a fight. It's getting to be a very good fight. Because Tate is fighting exactly as he now planned to do in the early rounds, which is work to the body, go to the head, and fight with this guy. His 240 pounds is too much for Kofsia to take. He must ball and push and shove, and that's what he's doing. Kutsia ended the round in very bad shape last round, the last round, and don't be surprised to see him go in the next two. They bumped heads violently then. Kutsia trying desperately for one good right hand that gets him in. But unfortunately, one good right hand is not going to do John Tate anything right now. He senses it. He feels it. The left thrown by Tate. Tate working methodically. There he is. Working methodically. And now you can understand the nickname of the fighting machine. How true that is, Marvel, because that's exactly what you're looking at, a fighting machine. They programmed him out of Knoxville, Tennessee, out of, out of the amateur program that comes from Knoxville, Tennessee, and he's fighting like a real pro right now. We are in round 12. And Kotsia trying to hang out against John Tate. Less than a minute left of the round. That time Kotsia able to duck away, but Tate keeps coming at him. Tate is almost landing his right hand at will. Scoring to the body on the inside. Ten unanswered punches. Kutsia is just not doing anything but take. And I, and I notice he's not talking too much. So beginning to look tired. He has had problems in later round. Had an asthma problem as a youngster as Tate again was able to land the right hand. His asthma problem today is called John Tate. Final seconds, round 12. Here is John 
Tate, now fighting out of Knoxville, Tennessee, grew up in West Memphis, Arkansas, undefeated in 19 pro fights, won 16 by knockout as an amateur. He fought 25 times, won the right to represent the United States in the heavyweight division. In the 1976 Olympic Games, he lost in the semifinals to a two-time Olympic champion. Theophilo Stevenson of Cuba, Tate won a bronze medal. Says he'd love to get another crack at Stevenson sometime down the road. This is round 13. And John Tate has taken the lead in this bout. It's for the WBA Heavyweight Championship. Well, this is almost like a Rocky story, isn't it? The underdog comes here. He's absolutely overwhelmed. He's absolutely in the minority here. And he has taken this fight and fought and fought until he has got... Could see it where he wants him. Now, if he can just sustain it. And Tate comes off the eighth round knockout of South African Kelly Knitzer back on June 2nd, doing it here in South Africa. Very fast for big man. Knows how to cut the ring. Strictly follows training and fight plans. try to urge Kotsia on between rounds. But Freddy Kotsia is a very tired man at this point. This is the first time that he's been up in his toes moving around. His corner has told him, don't stand, still move. And of course, that works both ways. You can move yourself when you're so tired and get even more tired. Tate is being very patient. He knows he's way ahead now. This is a crowd that began filtering into the stadium at 2 o'clock this afternoon. This fight has been headline news in South Africa the past two, three weeks. And they have to be disappointed. That time, uh, Tate slipped. Crowd reacted, but it was a slip. He got hit by a right hand. He slipped at the same time. The crowd thought he was in trouble, but that's no such thing. Referee Carlos Medica out of Panama. Kosia threw a winging right hand and got a straight counter to the body. Tate continues to throw combinations. Roberto Duran says they have him like a punching bag now. The great punch of Roberto Duran is running with every punch like a he was fighting this fight. We're getting a stereo fight here, Marvin. Roberto, a very active boxing fan. We have heard him right throughout and throughout the uppercut. Uppercuts by Tate. He isn't quite a punching bag yet, but he's the next thing to it. He's getting a lot of punishment. Now, John, that's a first sign of tiredness I've seen in John. He's dropped his arms and stepped back. That's not a good sign. But he's only got two more rounds to go. That extra weight may now be telling on John. Garcia firing away, but not over the land. Although the crowd continues to roar, but not able to really tell the impact of the punch. Final seconds in round 13. Garcia out of Boxburg, South Africa, 24 years old, turned professional at the age of 19 after some 200 amateur bouts, guided by the training of his father. First, he did not like boxing, so his father would pay him 50 cents a week to keep at it. He was a pro, really a 12 at 50 cents a week for me. I don't think that uh, Hetty would appreciate that, but Hetty's dad felt that uh, the exercise in the gym would help alleviate his asthma, and Harry looks like a very, very tired man. His father is the central man in the corner is talking to The man with the glasses that you see on your screen is the doctor who's holding out his trunks. Let's listen. It's wonderful if you can understand Africaner, but what they're telling him is stay away from John Tate and Counterpunch. To round number 14. We are live from Pretoria, South Africa, on Sports World. And it is John Tate in command. Low blow. 
intentional. Well, the referee had better call able to break him. John Dance is back too far and allows to could see it or get out. He should stand right there when the referee breaks him and jump right back in. It's to his advantage to keep up his ponderous attack and not to bounce around with him. Outside puts he will put up against the ropes, but the counter by Tate. Great counter punching by Tate. Caught him going back with a right hand. John apparently content to let this round go a little while before he starts his fighting. And he has Garcia covering up. After a slow start by both fighters, John Tate has come alive. He's built a good lead. He's in command now. I cannot imagine what his quarter told him why he is so cautious in this 14th round unless he thinks he has it won so big that he doesn't have to fight anymore. Many a fighter has lost a title that way. I'm of the old Angelo Dundee school. Fight to the last minute of every round. I've never heard Angelo Dundee say to one fighter, quit fighting, you're ahead. Less than one minute left in round 14. Uppercuts, combination thrown by Tate. If Tate was faster pursuing him, he could pursue him to the rock ropes and get him. But Tate is apparently just happy to land 10 blows in exchange for one. That time a slip. Another slip. Calcilla went down. He has a cut under the left eye. Not important. Small cut, but it is a dick. Got an excellent corner. They'll take care of that, but there's only one round left. We have had several slips during the course of this 15-round fight. It did rain intermittently throughout the afternoon. And the rain conditions have been very poor. Final seconds of the round as Kutsia is jarred by Tate. On Sports World, there's a... Next Saturday. Saturday is our day during the football season. Tomorrow is a doubleheader. New England against Miami. A great ball game. That will be seen in the early time zones along with the game between the Oakland Raiders and the New York Jets. Second half of the doubleheader. This will be seen by most of the country. That is the San Diego Chargers and the Los Angeles Rams. A doubleheader tomorrow. Let's go back to Pretoria. The 15th round of the championship fight. This is round 15. As you look at John Tate, 30, if he's able to last this out, the fight appears to be his. Few people thought it'd go 15 rounds. John Tate is on his way to the heavyweight championship of the world WBA version. Whether he can go ahead and take it on to an undisputed, complete world title by taking on Larry Holmes is yet to be seen. The story of this night is that it went 15 rounds and John fought his methodical and plotting fight. His corner has just told him, take it to him. You've got your second win. Go to him. Finish this off big. They did not tell him to hold on. He's got the championship. They told him to finish him off. And let's see if John can follow instructions. Coatsy bleeding slightly. Coatsy bleeding slightly under there. No, no factor at all. Garcia would need a knockout right here to pull this one out. Garcia shows more signs of wanting to survive the 15th round than he does of wanting to knock out John Tate. That far back, his corner should have sent him out to do a kamikaze on it. Do or die. It's the heavyweight championship of the world. Proud of better than 81,000. Very excited about this fight, but very disappointed right to the left. It has been John Tate taking command. The vaunted punch of Katsia has not been present tonight. Either John Tate can take a whale of a punch, or Katsia has not been able to punch as well. It certainly happens in the 15th round. He has no strength left. Tate is taking him apart again methodically. Right hand by Tate. That was firing. 
final round of the scheduled 15 rounder. Tate is showing that he should be the heavyweight champion of the world. He has done an excellent job tonight. He fought the fight he needed to fight, and he is finishing off Patsia just the way it should be. There is no question that he is the heavyweight champion of the world. And we're talking WBA version. Larry Holmes would be the man that Tate would have to be if he hangs on here. And that fight is going to be a little of a fight. But see has proved one thing, he can take a tremendous shot. Duran is saying behind us the referee would be justified in stopping it, but that's not so. Right hand by Tate. Final seconds of the final round. And we'll be back with the decision after these messages from your local station. That camera? What camera? All right, we are back we in Pretoria as we await the decision of this WBA heavyweight championship fight. Ladies and gentlemen, John Tate and Hedy Cosia, let's go to the ring. The new heavyweight champion of the world, John Tate. So, John, here we go, Tiffany 